Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. Today I'm going to be trying out Chris Morocco's recipe for chocolate almond fudge. So Chris posted a picture of this fudge on his Instagram a couple days ago and it looked incredible. When I searched for the recipe, I found something I didn't expect to find. Avocado. So I have heard of avocado used in chocolate desserts before. Um, I've never tried it personally though, so I'm super excited to try this one out today. I do these Bon Appetit recipe tests every Wednesday, so if you like this one, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Without any further ado, let's see how this goes. As always, I'll leave a link to the recipe and ingredient quantities in the description box below. All right, so I'm starting off by toasting my almonds. This will give them time to toast and cool down before I need them for the recipe. So I'm just measuring them out then popping them in the oven until they're golden brown. Next, I'm getting my pan all ready to go by spraying the inside of an eight x four loaf pan with a little bit of nonstick spray and then lining with some cling film. You could also use parchment paper. So this fudge has got two different kinds of chocolate, cocoa powder and a bar of bittersweet chocolate. So I'm breaking it into small pieces then microwaving on half power in 30 second bursts until it's fully melted. You could also do this over a double boiler. With all the warm ingredients prepped and cooling down, I'm moving on to making the base of the fudge. So I weighed a couple different avocados and they all weighed whole, about 230 grams. So you shouldn't have too much variability here. So I'm using one half of an avocado. I'm using almond butter, which is what Chris Morocco recommended. If you don't like almond butter or you don't wanna buy it specifically for this recipe, peanut butter would work probably just as well here. When it comes to the maple syrup, I actually made this recipe twice. First measuring in a liquid measuring jug, second measuring in a dry measuring scoop. So stay tuned till the end of the video so you can see how both versions turned out. So I'm pulsing this in my blender just briefly. If you have a food processor, you could do it in there as well. So once it's smooth and homogenous, I'm just adding in my water, cocoa powder, and salt, and then returning this to blend until smooth. It comes together really quickly. It's less than 45 seconds of mixing time. So this one moves pretty quickly. Once you've got everything homogenous, you can take that off and add in your melted chocolate. And then you really just pulse this to get it combined. Now, Chris does say that once you add in this melted chocolate to pulse it just until combined, I imagine that's because the recipe could split because the melted chocolate bar has both the cocoa solids and cocoa butter. And I believe if you overbeat chocolate, it can cause it to separate. So you wanna be a little bit conservative with the mixing once you add that melted chocolate in here. So mine is looking good. It looks nice and thick here. So you can see the texture looks great. So then I'm just spreading it to get an even layer using my spatula and then tapping it on the surface of my counter just to level out any swirls. Next, I'm just scattering my prepared almonds over the top. This was a lot of almonds and it gave a really generous layer all over the top of the fudge. And then I'm sprinkling with some flaky sea salt. And then I'm just gently pressing the almonds and the salt into the surface of the fudge to make sure that it's adhered evenly. Once it's all pressed down, I'm just folding the cling film over, pressing it onto the surface of the fudge, and then popping this in the refrigerator for at least an hour. But Chris said you can do this a week in advance. So the recipe said to let this fudge chill in the refrigerator for an hour until it was firm. After three hours, my fudge is still a little bit kind of sticky and acting a little bit more like a really thick pudding. So um, it's not exactly the texture I was expecting. I thought I would be able to pick it up and hold it in my hands. It's definitely more of a fork situation going on here. That said, it looks really good. So let's see how it tastes. So the flavor of this is good, great chocolatey flavor. That little bit of sea salt on the top really helps balance out the sweetness. I really like the taste of this. The texture is troubling. So this looks so much better than the first time I made it. It looks much more like the picture from the Bon Appetit website. So adjusting the measurement for maple syrup made a huge improvement to the appearance of this fudge. Um, let's see about the taste though. So. I can actually pick this up in my fingers. Definitely more firm and fudge-like than the previous time. Still super rich, really gooey, still nice and sweet. Mm. Yeah. Melting a little bit, but not too much. So I'm really happy with this chocolate almond fudge. The flavor and texture are exactly what I was expecting now that I've adjusted the maple syrup measurement. So I would definitely recommend that you give this one a try. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. 
Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.